Hello everyone and welcome to the ASUS booth here at CES 2024. We've got a lot of PC gaming tech to look at, so let us begin. And this is, well, this is the monitor area really. There's also a few updates to the PC component side of thing as well. And I'm going to begin by showing you the talk of the town as it were. This 480 hertz OLED gaming monitor. It is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, when you see this, it's just so bizarre because obviously you've got this infinite contrast here really from the OLED panel, but the UFO test that we have here usually shows you a large amount of motion trailing, especially if you're looking at a 60 or 120 hertz monitor. If it's IPS or VA, you always have like this horrible trail behind it. But this is genuinely the first time I've ever seen this test where there is just well, there's no motion blur whatsoever. None. It is absolutely bizarre. It's not something I've ever, ever experienced before. And because it's 1440p, 27 inches as well, it is going to be very friendly for gamers. It will fit on most desks. And if you are going to sort of play eSports or something like that, I guess that's what this monitor is designed for. But it's just so user-friendly, actually, for most people for all types of games. This is also an HDR monitor as well with a peak brightness. And I think it's 1300 nits. Yes, 1300 nits of peak brightness paired with obviously the color accuracy and just the overall pop that you're gonna get with an OLED panel. This thing looks absolutely insane. I cannot wait to get it into the studio and just do some gaming. So that is the world's fastest 27 inch OLED gaming monitor, but going to something perhaps a little bit more specific than that, we have probably my favorite display that's here, the world's first dual mode OLED gaming so, monitor. And the thing that makes this so special is the fact that this is actually a 4K 240 hertz display, which is already insane. I mean, there aren't really too many games that you'd be able to drive at 4K 240, but as I say, eSports and things like that. So I guess it's a little bit more future-proof. And if you are gonna get like a future graphics card, you know, fantastic. But if you do wanna play eSports or anything else really that's a bit easier to drive, then this can actually go up to 480 hertz if you down res it to 1080p. So obviously your pixel Pixel mapping there will be one to four. The image quality on a 32 inch display isn't gonna be quite as good, but it's really, really cool. Cause I think 32 inch is probably the sweet spot. Maybe if they were gonna bring like a 34 or 36 inch, then that would be slightly better. But I think, you know, like a 42 inch and above green for your desk is a little bit too big for me. So it's really cool to see a dual mode display and something that's gonna be really flexible. But again, have that HDR peak brightness of 1300 nits. But as nice as it is to actually see the 16 by nine nine displays, something that I'm personally a little bit more invested in is ultra wide. Now they've gone a bit more curved than I personally would want on this one. This is the PG39WCDM catchy name as always, but fundamentally this is a larger display. So this is actually a 39 inch ultra wide. And this is running at a resolution of 3440 by 1440. So it's gonna be a little bit easier to run. I know a lot of people watching this would prefer that it was a slightly higher resolution, but to be honest for gaming, this is probably gonna be the sweet spot. But because they've given you that extra curve, it does give you that bit more immersion really. But if you are gonna use this for a productivity where you're working with straight lines, obviously it is going to warp a little bit. So for video, editing i think for me this is probably a little bit too curved i prefer to have something a little bit softer but actually for gaming a lot of people really do like this a bit more of a wraparound display and obviously this is one that's really big but again not too big to actually use at your desk as with the others this monitor is sporting an oled panel with a peak brightness again of 1300 nits but this does go up to 240 hertz and as you can see it does have like quite an anti-reflective coating on this one this one is definitely a lot more matte and i think this does help bear in mind just how curved it is pretty darn cool we also have an update to some of the components here and the main thing really for me that has been the sort of talk of the town if you were when it comes to ces for pc gaming is the whole wire free ecosystem that you're going to get from both asus i went to say msi and asus at the same time from both msi and asus so they're calling their system btf and this is both better and worse than the msi solution because it's better in the fact that you don't have any sort of cables whatsoever on the graphics card so if you actually have a look at the one they have here you'll see you have this little like power fin 
on the bottom and this is where all of your power is going to go it does up to 600 watts just like you'll find on the new gen 5 connection so you're not making any compromises there other than the fact that obviously these graphics cards will only work in a compatible motherboard so i think second hand market is going to be a little bit meh on this i'm not sure whether the value of these will be really high because there won't be many of them or the opposite they're sort of shrink down because obviously there's a limited amount of people that actually be able to buy them and obviously it does add a little bit extra complexity means you do need a specific graphics card whereas with the msi one you can use anything but with the msi one you're going to have to have a cable visible which kind of defeats the point really when you think about it of a wire free system but it's still going to look a whole lot better so watch this space whilst we're on the topic of graphics cards though we do of course also have the new super range from nvidia this one actually seems a whole lot lighter than the larger 4090 that was uh, unexpected so this is still a strict version you can see it's a nice looking graphics card very solid but obviously does come with a price premium but as we know all of these new super cards this one being the 4070 super they're not massively different so don't go expecting like huge performance increases you're looking really i think it's anywhere between like one to five percent on the 4080 super uh 10 on the 4070 ti super or this one is the 4070 super where we don't get a boost to vram but we do get an extra about 15 percent extra performance on average but this is just nvidia's numbers obviously we have to sort of test this in the studio i've already got some cards so we start benchmarking them when we get back uh moving around over here we do also have some new components when it comes to the cooling solution so this is the new what's this this is the strix cooler this actually comes with an lcd now and it looks pretty premium i like the whole roundness that you're going to get here i'm hoping the prices of these are decent because the previous asus ones did seem to be quite expensive but it's a really nice high res screen on this one actually i think a lot of people will be happy with this don't forget that actually asus were one of the first people to do this with their original ryu cooler uh, but if you do want to save some money but you still like the design you can buy this version that has like a static fixed display on it that i'm not it's not that i don't like it i just think i don't know just go for like a normal more budget friendly cooler or step up to the lcd i don't really understand the point of this middle ground but more options are good and the fact that they're refreshing them clearly means they did that yeah, clearly means that they do sell and actually while we're on the topic of component there are some more to talk about but they're all the way over here so look we we'll run we we'll test out the image stabilization on this camera which is actually pretty good but yes here we have more components to talk about and i will also say before i forget this is the brand new 7600 xt from amd really excited to test this one actually i didn't see this coming not sure whether it leaked and i didn't notice or whether it didn't leak uh, but yeah that's pretty cool that's their tough gaming edition obviously that's going to give you a little bit more performance than the 7600 basically is aiming to compete with like the 4060 ti but i'm fairly sure it comes with double the vram so it has 16 gigs so as long as it's got decent performance i think this is gonna fit a really nice sort of hole really versus the 4060 ti but here is a brand new chassis actually from asus this is in their tough range and to me it looks very similar to the likes of deep cools cases where it's like nice and very sort of plain in a good way where you've got this sort of like textured square design for airflow throughout it's pretty cool but what they're actually showing off here is the fact that this case will support their sort of wire free system so you can have all of your cables plugged in the other side uh, this is like a side by side so this is like a normal build uh, you've got all of the cables like your atx is there uh, again for your graphics cards there you've got all of your cables and then again coming back maybe you'll notice this better this time all of those cables are now missing which is pretty cool i think this is pre-production because there is actually one cable right there at the top it's definitely a little bit odd isn't it and i would like to think this won't make it into the final version unless maybe there was a specific reason that it's there maybe like all of your cables won't fit around the other side so they give you like one as backup i don't really know but that's there this case by the way is called the gt302 and is going to retail for around about 110 dollars so definitely very reasonable pretty much on parity with the likes of like the corsair sort of 4000d but it looks ever so slightly bigger to my eyes but that could be a load of rubbish not entirely sure but yeah very nice sort of price point there definitely looking forward to building inside it and we move over to the other side of the room we do also have some gaming peripherals here including a really really lightweight mouse i think this one is in at 54 grams so it's barely like you're holding anything at all would be quite excited actually to test this one as well i mean this was something i brought up do you remember a few years ago where everything seemed to be all about these like holy mice not like in a religious way mice that just have holes in them anyway in terms of uh, the mouse yeah 
super, super lightweight. So if you're going to be playing, especially esports games, anything really where you're sort of flicking the mouse around at high speed, definitely going to appreciate that. So that's the ROG Keras 2 Ace gaming mouse. They are also showing off this microphone here. It does have RGB, but I think the system, oh no, it's going to say the system has gone to sleep. There it is. Now, there's only so many ways that you can make a microphone look different. Clearly, going for RGB is one of them, but to me, this does look, I guess it's not exactly the same, but like the main microphone bit here that actually has the RGB is very reminiscent of what HyperX were doing with their, was it the Quadcast microphone? But it's suspended, and obviously this means you're not gonna pick up a load of background noise when you sort of hit your desk and stuff. So we won't know until that comes out how good that is. We do also have a new keyboard on offer. This is called the ROG Falcon RX Low Profile. Obviously, this uses low profile switches, as the name would suggest. Super, super thin, very, very premium to the feel. Looks really nice in this white color, actually. Um, and I must say that I am someone that really enjoys a low profile keyboard. I find that if you're someone that does a lot of typing but also plays games, then this is kind of the sweet spot, but obviously personal preference really is everything. So this could be quite interesting. We could get this into the studio once again. Let me know. And there are actually, or there is, an update to the ROG headphones that we have here. The main one really being obviously besides hopefully better sound quality is the fact that you do get this receiver now. So if you want to use these for gaming, then you can plug in this USB-C adapter and then use like 2.4 low latency wireless rather than relying on the Bluetooth that you had on the previous generation. I actually quite like them. I use them on the train. True story, I lost one of the cases for them on the train, which was a bit annoying. So earphones are in and I sort of just like got off the train and realized what I'd done. It was too late and I lost them. Uh, for the money, they're actually pretty good headphones, so it'll be interesting to test these as well. Something else, by the way, that I know we don't cover very often on the channel, but definitely does need to be shouted out, are these new phones from ROG. So these are the ROG Phone 8s, and they definitely look very different to the previous generation, but I definitely think for the better. Essentially, talking to some of the higher ups, they've realized now that ROG is starting to get a bit of recognition. People know them as like some of the best gaming phones, if not the best gaming phones out there, and they want to appeal to a little bit more of a mass market. So there are actually two new phones, but the design of this is definitely a lot more understated. We do have some RGB on the back, but that can be disabled if you want. Besides the obvious aesthetic change, obviously we do have a bump to the specifications. We've got Snapdragon V3, I believe, on both of these phones. We also have LTPO displays, which means that they will go down to a low refresh rate when you're not using them to preserve battery life. But this one, I mean, look at the design of that. That is not subtle. You have moving text on the back. And I mean, I'm not really sure how useful this is because obviously when you're sort of holding your phone, well, you can't see anything. So that's uh, probably just marketing to be honest with you. But yeah, it looks really nice. Not really any bezels on that. Really nice, clean design. Let me know guys if you do actually want to see a little bit more coverage on this and we can get one in for test in the studio. As you'd expect, this being the Asus booth, we do of course have some gaming laptops here. And this is actually a really nice comparison of size because this is a very large gaming laptop as it is. This is a 16 inch ROG Strix G16. We really liked the old G16 when we saw it earlier last year. Whereas this is the 18 inch version, both of these go up to an RTX 4080, I believe, i9 CPU, 65 watt TDPs. But I really like this comparison because it shows you just how massive the 18 inch laptops are. These are definitely more desktop replacement sort of territory. These have Quad HD displays up to 240 Hertz. So if you're an esports gamer or well, general purpose gamer and you're like ray tracing, it's kind of going to appeal to both of you really. But if you do want to step it up, then you can look at the SCAR range. So this is the SCAR 16, this is the SCAR 18, and these now have mini LED displays in the top of them as well. They go up to a 4090 laptop GPU. And yeah, if you want something that's like super mega powerful, it's probably got better cooling as well. Maybe it's going to be a bit quieter, but again, we'll have to test this. When we get into the, into the studio, then those are pretty much your picks, right? I mean, again, I've liked the SCAR range for a while, really. But these are the laptops that I saw in the studio last week, and I have to say I was really impressed with them. In fact, this is the exact laptop that I've been editing some videos on. I took this with me. This is the uh, new Zephyrus G16. So that's the G16. That's the G14. They do come in different colors as well. You don't have to get the white on the 14, but this is an AMD laptop whereas this is an Intel laptop, but crucially this uses the brand new Intel Core Ultra CPUs, and these have what they're calling the 
uh, low power efficiency cores within them as well as like the new AI features. But it's going to be interesting to test battery life on it purely because these are sort of geared towards like longer lasting battery if you're using it for more normal tasks. And this is something that obviously with a gaming laptop kind of suffers a lot of the time. You'll find that they don't always last very long, which is very annoying if you just want to sort of do some basic web browsing and your battery is draining really quickly. This is something with the Intel Core Ultra they're sort of hoping to fix and remedy. So watch this space now. I guess I'll let you know how that works. Intel aren't having all of the fun here as we also have the tough range of laptops. And this is the one that's caught my eye actually. This is the Tough Gaming A15. And you can see this actually packs a new Ryzen 9 processor uh, up to a 8945H. So it's gonna again be interesting to test the performance difference because whilst Intel might have those low power efficiency cores, crucially people want their gaming laptop to be ultra fast. So if the single core gaming performance of these a sort of top draw, then maybe it is time to look at getting AMD for your next laptop rather than Intel. Again, watch this space. But when it comes to laptops, right, there's only one thing here that's definitely the true star of the show, and that is located all the way over here. And this actually is not a gaming laptop, which I know for PC-centric, the gaming channel might be a little bit odd. But when you see it, if you've not seen this already, because I know it's gone mad in everyone's sub box, you're going to be pretty blown away. So this is actually a laptop. It's an all-in-one solution, and it comes with two displays, but you can actually stand it up and then use it like this in a coffee shop, which would be absolutely bizarre. So you've got two 4K displays, both of which are OLEDs, and there are so many different ways you can do it. So this is called the ZenBook Duo, and we've, well, you may have heard of the ZenBook Duo because it's kind of been uh, working its way up through the different years. Most recently, it's gonna have that half screen above the keyboard, but now you actually get this keyboard that comes completely separate, look. It's really lightweight, it's weird to pick this thing up. But this actually sits on top of the normal laptop, kind of like that, when you wanna use it as a laptop. But then when you have the room to set it up, you can actually use it like this, which is really weird and really bizarre. And if you do forget your keyboard for any reason, then you can make the bottom of the display be like half keyboard as well, like you had on the old one, and then sort of use the top of the display uh, with some extra windows and things. There's some smart software here as well. So it will remember your windows. So, I mean, I know Microsoft Teams doesn't sound very interesting, but if you're in a Teams meeting and you've got a particular way they want everything set up. You can actually capture all of those windows, save them, and then next time you sort of want to open them up, uh, the ASUS software will remember, which is pretty interesting. Does this appeal to you? And will you be buying one? Once again, getting our steps in, guys, I do want to also show you on the topic of sort of like OLED in the like consumer department. I'm not selling that, that sounds really boring. But you tell me whether this is boring. This is the world's first foldable OLED portable monitor. Again, nice uh, catchy name there. Everyone needs them first. But this is something you could quite literally fold away and then take with you from place to place, which is pretty cool. Not sure how many applications there are for the use of a sort of portable display, but actually I think this is probably gonna be really useful because if you have one that's small and is easy to sort of put away, then obviously its use is a little bit more limited. Whereas having something you can actually fold out and then use, I can see that that is gonna be quite useful. I'm not entirely sure on price though, and I have a feeling that this could get um, a little bit expensive. But yeah, there we go, everyone. That is my highlights of the ASUS booth, mainly PC gaming in CES 2024. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below of the monitors. What do you want me to get in first? What do you want me to test? What should I test? And obviously I've spoken to loads of people and I have loads of knowledge on the products now. So if there's anything you want to know specifically about any of them, let me know down in the comment section below and I will do my best to make sure uh, that we answer as many as we can. But smash the like button if you've enjoyed this, get yourself subscribed, and we will see you in the next video.